As usual, this is like 42 takes. So we're going to talk about Azure Active Directory and tenants. And I will be honest, I was in Azure for a few years now, and I had no idea how this worked. I'm still not sure I know how it works, but I know more about it. And so let's see if this helps anybody else. So this is typically the way I've ever seen Active Directory in Azure, and it's because I typically have worked one of two ways. One was I worked on my own personal stuff, in which case I had a subscription and that subscription was bound to an active directory. And I really didn't know anything about it other than I added users and stuff to it. Right. And so when you use active directory, um, you know how this works. Basically, uh, you have a, your subscription is bound to a tenant or to a directory. And so I mean, the arrow actually goes that way because you actually configure the subscription to be bound to the tenant. And so in this case, that means this subscription will use this Active Directory. And it turns out you can have multiple Active Directories. And I know everybody knows that, but I have never had never used it. So the other thing that I typically use Active Directory for in Azure for my personal projects or even at work. At work, it turns out we typically only use one tenant, one directory, and everything's bound into it. And we'll have a certain number of subscriptions. And then all of our apps and for like my projects were in a single subscription or maybe a couple, one for non prod and one for prod. And then I know in active directory, cause I use it all the time. There are a bunch of users in active directory and app registrations and enterprise apps. And then the users table has a bunch of users in it. There's groups, there's all that kind of stuff. This was just really to give you a feel. So, and it turned out if you go to the Azure AD users, and to the blade, you know, that's the user blade. Um, you can actually assign roles on the tenant in the user blade. And we'll talk a little bit more where the permissions are signed here, right? So I'm a user in the directory. What permissions do I have on the directory itself? And that's in the assigned roles. And we'll look at that in only a couple of minutes. So the other thing I want to show kind of about this is um, it turns out you can have multiple directories, multiple tenants. And actually, my personal account has multiple tenants and I knew that because I did some Azure Sphere work, but I never really understood it. And I think I understand it now and you'll tell me if I got this right. So it turns out you can have multiple tenants in Active Directory and each of those tenants can have its own subscriptions. And basically you are assigned roles on each of the Active Directories. In most cases, I don't actually have any permissions like on the corporate one, really. I don't have any permission to manipulate Active Directory. I have the permission to fill out a request and then somebody else will or some program will fill out, uh, manipulate Active Directory. But the other one here, so if you look at a user in Active Directory, you will see that you have assigned roles and you'll see Azure role assignments. And that is really weird. And it's because the roles you have on the assigned roles are really on the directory itself and not on any Azure resources. And then all your roles on the Azure resources show up on the user blade um, under Azure role assignments. Now, the permissions that you have or the role assignments on a subscription or a resource group or on a service or resource, those are actually set on the blade for that actual thing. So the subscription blade, you can set permissions on it. Or if you're using an ARM template, you do it on the ARM template for the subscription. And the same for like a service. So if I wanted to use uh, event hubs and I needed access to it, I would either configure that on the resource blade, which would in this case would be the event hubs blade, or I would configure it using an ARM template bound to the resource blade. But I just, I wanted to point this out because it's kind of confusing. The first time you look at your Azure user in Active Directory, you actually see that you have assigned roles and assigned role assignments. And the assigned roles are actually managed in Active Directory and the other permissions typically are managed at the resource level. So in this case, I have two tenants and you can only see one tenant at a time. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you can only see one tenant at a time. So in the portal, so you pick which portal you're gonna look uh, which tenant you're gonna look at. And so in this case, uh, if I was switched in this one, I would see these two subscriptions. If I was in this one, I would only see this one subscription. And so um, why is this important? Well, it turns out you can end up with something like this. I didn't even know it. So um, the important parts for this discussion are, well, they're all important, but like we're only gonna talk about orange, blue, and teal, green here, whatever that is. Um, so it turns out my primary Azure subscription, uh, Joe at freemansoft.com, I actually have a Freemansoft Azure uh, tenant or directory 
and that has my personal subscription on it, a uh, personal uh, subscription that didn't have an MSDN tied to it. It has an MS old, or it had an old MSDN subscription tied to it. And then it's got other users and app registrations and all that stuff is on this. And then hanging off of that are a bunch of resources like resource groups and all that. So this is where I've always operated. It turns out I did some Azure Sphere work a while back and I have an Azure Sphere directory and I've never really understood what it did. They said it's tenant and you had to configure the tenant, but they didn't. I have never seen a link anywhere that tells me that's how this works. So my user actually exists in both of these active directories and both of these tenants in Azure Active Directory. And when I flip back and forth, I get different permissions. I'm either, these are scopes. I'm either operating in this scope or I'm operating in this scope. Now it turns out a while back based on some subscription work, I wanted to create an Office 365 um, for the, my like consulting company. And so it turns out I actually have a third active directory and that Active Directory has Microsoft Teams, Office 365, and Skype for Business on it. And I'm pretty sure it was because I had like Office 365 subscription uh, and I wanted to set it up and play with it as part of some MSDN platform thing. So it turns out I actually have three, and I'll, like I said, I'll discuss this one later. I actually have three tenants. I have only ever used this one knowingly. This one I use on the command line because all the instructions told me to, but I didn't know what it meant. So we can look at this real quick. Now, if you want to know if you've got multiple tenants, right? So typically you're going to log in and it's going to look something like this right here. Hey, here's JoeFreemanSoft.com and he's in the FreemanSoft Azure tenant. Now, if you click and you see this switch directory, that actually means you have multiple directories available to you. In your corporate account, you probably don't. Well, you might, right? Um, and so in this case, um, and there's some other weirdness here in corporate accounts. I can show you and I can't show you because I can't tell you who I'm working with. Um, so basically, uh, it turns out I have my own active in my Azure Freeman soft um, directory. I actually have an Azure sphere. They moved away from tenant, I think, to doing it in your own tenant. I don't know. It's confusing as heck. So I have an extra user ID just for Azure sphere in my Freeman soft Azure. A directory. So let's look at the directories. So you can see here, I actually have three directories um, that uh, are tied to my user ID. That means my user ID is plugged into those three directories. Now I happen to be an Azure, a uh, admin on two of those. So actually FreemanSoft Azure and FreemanSoft Inc. Office, um, those two I'm an admin on. When I switch to the Azure Sphere tenant, it turns out I'm a user in Azure Sphere but I don't actually have access to the Azure Sphere Azure Active Directory. And so if I were to switch in here, I have very little I can see because it's designed just for my IoT development. And so, because um, I haven't done anything else in there, I guess I should try. Anyway, so if you were to pick one of these, if I were to go to Freeman Soft Azure. So now you can see I'm actually in a different tenant here, right? You can see Freeman Soft Inc. Office 375. So that means I've changed into that. That means my permissions that I have only exist within uh, the tenant, right? So I flipped from this tenant to this one. And actually, I flipped from this tenant where I had all of this stuff to do down to this one. And the, there's no subscriptions tied to this one. This is just Active Directory for Office 365. I have no Azure permissions in when I flip into this tenant. And so that's it really. Uh, the goal here was to describe, hey, what does this mean here? You may not have it. If you don't have it, it's because you don't have permissions to any other directories. Your, your user ID doesn't exist in any other directories, right? And then um, another time I'll probably walk through like all the different permissions. The only other thing I wanted to point out um, here is, oh, that was not what I intended to do, is, um, like I said here, you have uh, app registrations, you've got other users, you've got service principles. There's a bunch of things that go into Active Directory um, itself, right? And so these are kind of the parts of Azure Directory, and then these are subscriptions, and each one of these would have stuff hanging off of it. If you've just got a personal account, this is probably you, but it's good to know there's more out there. Hope that was useful. Have a great day.